this thing is bone dry inside. There's there's no there's no fluid. There's no limp. There's 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 hey, nothing. Okay. No, it's not okay. You know what that is? Your last roommate's kidney. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tomato. <laughs> Unless it's got something to do with the hydrating, my man, because right now I'm a dehydrating maniac! <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome! Welcome to Geek Atomy channel, my name is Igor, we are continuing to analyze from Season 2, Episode 7, today it was a crazy one. So much information, so many weird, sometimes even insane theories, some things that made me go really, really into the Twilight Zone, and sometimes I researched some things that I thought I would never research. So I really hope this one is gonna be interesting for you. But before we begin, as usual, I wanna thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your donations is the loudest applause, is the biggest trust any YouTuber can receive, and I will be damned if I ever let you down. But wait a second, I really need to try to make my trailer guy voice. In this town, in this city, in this period, we welcome a new champion on our Patreon page. Her name is Mori. Welcome Mori to my Patreon page and I really hope you're gonna keep enjoying this content. Thank you so much for your support and let's begin. We'll start with some drawings in the school and usually I would just dismiss it as some drawings for Halloween made by kids before everything bad happened in this town. Yeah, maybe, but once again, since we're talking about Fromville and we know how important drawings are here from Victor, from Eden, we've seen some from Megan, the drawings on the walls in the caves, there are a lot of drawings and usually they are important and we can see here a lot of witches and a lot of some weird monsters and yeah all of them look like something kids would probably draw when they are asked to draw some monsters in you know like in a school assignment but once again let's just remember this there is a very popular theory about a witch and a demon beotuk tarot cards you probably aware of it if you're watching my channel Chances are you're not just a casual from watcher, you're probably aware of the many theories there are. Uh, so yeah, let's just remember those drawings, keep them in mind and as soon as something will hint that they are somehow relevant, we will remember them. So we may ask why I am always doing this, why I'm always trying to focus on some things even if I don't have any theory or no connection at all. Like almost 20 years ago when I was way younger and dumber, I used to do like parkour if you know like this extreme sport and when I started doing this, instead of seeing buildings and rails and everything else, I started seeing some places when I can do some tricks. So when you're focused on something, when you change the way you think, you notice things that you wouldn't usually notice. So this is why I'm always like telling you and both myself to remember those things because they may become important and we need to be aware of them. So when something really interesting comes, we will know how to connect the dots. So yeah, let's move forward. We can see the nails, the blue veins, something very similar we've seen on Martin in the tower, in the like in the basement where Boyd was held. We have also seen those blue veins, you know, like very blue on the Ankui children. So maybe it's all connected, maybe it's all relevant. So once again, we can see that Kenny sometimes have great ideas, quotation marks, because dude, you've been here on the defense, like in the trailer, in the last trailer we have seen, you said like we cannot be on the defense all the time. You have been on the defense for many, many years and now you finally have a chance to go on the offense to try to understand what are those monsters and maybe even understand how to fight them because this is the first time you and anybody else were able to kill one. So yeah, I understand the fear here because something that killed this kind of thing probably is very dangerous, but once again, if you're not gonna take chances here what is the point you never gonna escape so yeah once again we can see that Elgin is daydreaming again like even Boyd is are you okay like what is going on with you then later when he's gonna talk to Julie he's gonna say that there is something I'm supposed to remember I'm not even sure if it's like uh, true or not but when I looked at this thing lying on the floor in the morning it felt like there is something I need to remember sometimes we all have this feeling I'm pretty sure you had it and I know I had it many times like 
there is something in my head like it's it's almost there but you cannot grab it like what is this i need to remember it so so far we don't understand whether it's a deja vu kind of feeling or he has really been in this place but obviously elgin has some kind of a purpose here he was sent to this place with some goal in mind probably all of them need to fulfill some kind of role some kind of action to create but this one really knows something and probably this something is gonna be very crucial in understanding this place so let's keep our minds once again on elgin my theory okay it's not really my theory but i kind of like it i heard it from other people is that he has basically been in this place he was young and maybe there's also like the time travel and he's actually a child of fatima and alice that can happen too i don't know how but yeah everything can happen in from it so when we move forward i just enjoyed this show not only because of its clues and riddles and you know like mythology i actually enjoy every time there is some kind of a psychological concept being shown very clearly and one of it that we can see right now is basically people usually tend to see the bad things in others that they really um hate about themselves so when we see dale here is like trying to be morally superior and he's saying are we like that right now are you gonna put me in the box is that what we are right now this is someone who tried to throw some people outside to the night to be killed by the monsters because he's afraid he's not gonna have enough food and this is the guy who tries to appeal to some moral compass in Donna. So yeah, I enjoy those moments. I don't enjoy the character, obviously. I think he's a piece of shit in this situation. For example, you have seen it in season 1 when Julie was reacting to Victor and Trudy in a completely different matter based only on their appearance how they look one looks creepy one looks friendly and then receiving a completely once again different treatment from them one was actually friendly and one just wanted to take something from her so i really enjoy those small tiny moments in this show i think they are made usually fantastic and they are appealing to a correct audience which is i am and i hope you are too so yeah this one i think i need to take a break from from already because i am seeing this freaking monster here I can see this eyes, I can see a mouth here, I can see the shape of a head. So I think I need a break from From because I am obviously seeing things that are not there anymore. But if I'm gonna put this one next to the promotional image of the monster, they kinda look similar. You, you're gonna have to kill me here because I'm, I cannot do anything with myself, I'm just seeing here something very similar now in this situation i obviously don't think that the creators were like let's do the monster face in the walls but i i don't know i cannot help myself i'm just seeing a monster here in the wall so yeah we can see here that the extras are once again earning their money you can see the shock and awe in their face like this one is a bit look tired this one is really selling it oh my god what is happened to alice come on somebody help us please i am so shocked that he has been injured so yeah extras are selling you should obviously obviously you know like increase their pay or something like this now Jim went completely the Lulu Pro Max in this uh, episode. He's already like, this is what they want you to think. Like, if we're talking about the tinfoil hat, Jim is like trying to take a trophy here in this um, in this area in this episode. So yeah, when like Tabitha is confronts him and who created the monsters that come out at night, you want it to make all sense. You don't want it to be some kind of mystical or spiritual thing. You want it to be scientific. Sometimes I want to, but from completely different reasons than Jim but that moment was like okay like last episode I tried to defend you but when you heard the voice of somebody and you're asking like of course it's a person what else do you think it could be look around dude there's like 50 monsters that walk and talk just like people and then they rip your face off who else can it be almost anything you can imagine in this place you have like a teleport tree here you have like a boy in white who appears whatever he wants you have monsters walking around that cannot get inside because of a talisman they can talk to you and tell you like julie don't you recognize me what you have done here blah 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 i'm your grandma and your question is of course it's a person who else could it be anything like anybody else 
You need to fucking wake up already, Jim. This is season 2 and you need to start acting accordingly. So let's talk about drone here, okay? I think it's an interesting concept because we're gonna see in season 2 nothing is gonna be achieved with the drone. Maybe it's just a tool to connect between Jim and Randall, but I doubt it. I think you can find way better script solutions for it, you know, to introduce those two together. Like, once again, they talked about Randall helping Jim when he was... Uh, crushed by a house and Randall once again being a douche as usual but drone since we're talking about the lighthouse and lighthouse may be similar to the same light that Boyd um, used in the torch in order to reveal like this cellar when Mario and Randall and uh, Julia were held so maybe the lighthouse is serving in a very similar way the light it creates somehow creates this this whole place this whole magical mystical place and maybe just because like Tabitha was on top of it when the boy in white pushed her this is how she was able to escape this place to being on top of everything so drone can go pretty high it can go like this one seems not very sophisticated or like uh, very professional this is something for children but it still probably can get up to 20 30 40 meter high so i think that sometimes it's gonna be enough anyway i don't think this is some kind of just a plot device that's just been used once and that's it it probably should have some sort of uh, like use in maybe season 3 at least I hope so so when we move forward we learn a little bit about Randall and he's talking that he went to his nephew birthday this is supposed to be a gift for him now he is already obviously lost any hope that he's gonna see his nephew and he's basically using this drone to maybe just find some information about this place you know to be some to do some spy shit basically so yeah I'm, once again I'm just fantasizing here I'm just trying Trying to like put some information that's obviously not there but since we had a lot of people like coming with hope for something new I once again go into this Hollywood cliche when there's like a character he goes you want to make up with his brother to like he brings a gift to his nephew they were like not in good terms but he goes there with the gift and they're like no you gambled all our family money away and he's like yeah but I'm sorry I want to make you know you have seen this movie many many times so maybe it's something like this maybe it's not once again just me speedballing here and yeah he's also talking about that probably somebody here is on the inside this is basically when I started to fine who can it be now i ended up with two possible suspects christy and donna i don't know exactly if christy can be a suspect if yeah the creators did an amazing job to hide it i'm 99.9999999 percent sure she's not it but donna can definitely be or it's just a red herring for us the viewers you know like we're gonna start to suspect people and we're gonna miss some details that the creators want to hide from us yeah it's not gonna happen because we tend to check everything here we can see like some kind of a page some kind of an antenna once again jim is probably creating something or trying to create at least something he's not gonna rest until he's gonna send another signal uh so yeah let's come back to victor and ethan and we talked about victor being like a child in an adult body and we have seen this many many times but here he's very very mature because like I'm trying to protect you by pushing you away this is very mature decision okay this is not something that kids usually do so hats off to Victor for being an awesome guy here but you know like uh, bad things happen to my friends here who like we have seen a lot of people die but we have never seen Victor being like a, in a bond with some of them like what friends we know he lost his sister his mother who else like we haven't seen him explicitly losing one of his friends somebody who is close to him so yeah he may be just talking about people from colony house of course but it felt way more personal than this it felt like he already lost someone like Ethan somebody who is very close to him and you gotta love the mind of a child like well what's the point of being friends if we can be friends I really enjoy this question because like Victor was yeah it kind of has a point like yeah if we're gonna be friends let's be friends and of course the time this is episode 3 season 2 it's 11 11 11 10 whatever let's watch another episode it's 11 11 and then let's watch this episode 11 15 it moved four minutes why what is going on behind those clocks 
I need to have some theory, because it drives me insane, I cannot explain it with just some production malfunction, something that was made by mistake, it's you need to like really try to make a mistake like this, when the clock moves in every place and the second hand doesn't move, I know I talked about it already like dozens of times, but it keeps bugging me. Like, because sometimes when you find something that connects, you find some clue, you start to build some theories right away. There is some information that comes to your mind, like Scandinavian mythology, the religion, Christianity, whatever it is. Something co concerning time travel. But here, why does the time move so weirdly in this place? And why nobody noticed this? Why none of our, our characters ever notice? Like, have you noticed that the clocks don't work, but they freaking move? This is driving me insane because I, I cannot dismiss it as just something that was made by production and they just didn't notice. Because you just put their clocks that don't work. It's not that freaking difficult to find a clock that doesn't work. You put it in every place and you have clocks that don't move. But since they move, somebody moves them. Why? What for? Why? And of course I tried to read those uh, notes, you know, like those cards. The only one I could try to figure out, it was something like wish you were here or something like this. Probably not that important information, just once again some tiny pieces of lore for us. Now this, I have no idea what the hell is that, this is next to Alice's bed. Maybe something related to this, because this, if you can see the pipe here, this is how they release tension in this place, cannot blame them of course, but uh, once again, whatever this is, if it's connected somehow to this world, which I'm not very familiar with, you know. I guess you know or you don't, just like me. So yeah, when we move forward once again, we have this kind of coincidence. When Jade is talking here about making alcohol taste better, not like a stomach acid, once again, in a couple of minutes, we're gonna discover some bile from the monster, which is once again can be some sort of a coincidence. The writers were writing this and they were holding the bile in their, in their mind and they were like, okay, so let's talk about stomach acid. It's not exactly somehow related once again to the mysteries of this place, but I notice I share, as you know. And once again, Jade is really freaking smart. This guy was just sitting in this place, just reading something and then he kind of figured out like this, how to make the alcohol taste better. He's a physicist, he's, I don't know, uh, a programmer, he's a... Uh, I have no clue, this guy is freaking genius, he knows everything, he knows electricity, he knows everything. So, yeah, I am hoping he's gonna figure out something here in this place. And when he talks to Tabitha and he shows her the image of Victor, once again, if it wasn't for theory that Tabitha is somehow related to Victor, maybe she is Eloise and she doesn't remember it just like Elgin doesn't remember his youth. So yeah, I would probably not even notice this conversation, but once again, when you see something, it was written with purpose. What was the purpose of this conversation, of this uh, note by Jay that you caught it a lot quicker than I did? It was very nonchalant from Tabitha's side, she was like, yeah, this is Victor. Usually people are like, oh fuck, this is Victor, he's here, like we know he's been here for a long time, but this is like a 10 year old kid there. And now this dude is pretty old already, so he's been here for a very long time. We should definitely ask him how he survived here for so many years before the talismans. And she was like, yeah, this is Victor. What else is new? So is there something here? Is it completely insane to think that maybe Tabitha was also very young when she was here? Maybe she was here already, like her vision in episode 9, in season 1, when she saw the lighthouse and she saw this place with the camera moving pretty weirdly there. Maybe it's once again not just a vision, but some sort of a memory. And this is why it was so easy for her to recognize Victor, because somewhere in her subconscious she remembers Victor looking like that. As I told you, there's gonna be a lot of tinfoil hat theories here, or some crazy questions that I have no answers for them. And I just, once again, I just love Jade, you know, his remarks, without even trying, he's like, yeah, this is Christopher Insel book of crazy, and I'm already there on my floor, like laughing out loud. Because this guy is, I love his character. He is so funny without even trying. Like one of the best characters. Please don't kill Jade. Please don't kill Jade. I need him until the last episode of this show. And the craziest thing ever. Once again, we have something 
that looks like basically a mistake by a production. But once again, it just cannot be, because it's very difficult to make this kind of a mistake. Look at Smiley here, laying on this table, and he's like, oh my god, I have no wallet and nothing next to my left arm. And then we look here, and suddenly there is a wallet. Of course, you can explain it by basically, you know, like, Harold Perrineau is like there, okay, like, let me just put my wallet here. And I forgot it, and then they forgot to cut it out from editing. But once again, we know that Harold Perinaro is really super professional guy. Probably wouldn't make this. And even if he did, because nobody is like uh, completely immune from mistakes, then we can see next to his arm a wallet and a tooth. Where did the tooth came from? I can't imagine a situation between the scenes, like one of the actors is like, eh, can we cut please, I need to take out this tooth with blood from my pocket with my wallet and put it next to Smiley here, because it's just not feeling comfortable in my jeans here next to me. This is insane and they disappear. Now once again, it's not only the fact that after that, when we look at Smiley in many, many other scenes, there is no wallet, there is no tooth, there is nothing there. What is insane in this situation that once again, no one from the characters noticed that. Nobody, not Kenny, not Boyd, not Christy, no one like... There was a wallet here with a tooth a couple of seconds ago. Where did it go? Did it grow legs and just left? Did the cicadas already took it and fly away with it? What is happening? Now, I hope I explained myself correctly, because like, after seeing so many movies and TV shows in my life, when something like this happens, like we have seen it already in big, you know, big budget TV shows, like Game of Thrones had their Starbucks glass uh, in, the, in the middle of uh, Winterfell, it can happen. Mistakes can happen, but not like that. It's not like, you know, like we seen the Starbucks and then we seen the Starbucks with, you know, like some kind of croissant there next to it and then just the Starbucks again, then just the croissant and then like Daenerys going party with both of them and then suddenly everything's okay. So yeah, I am very sorry that I'm driving you insane today. I'm sorry that I'm very emotional today. I hope it doesn't bother you. But once again, I've been in this TV show for the last couple of weeks every day, almost every day. And when I see something that I barely have any hint of explanation to it, not even when I go insane and, you know, like to this completely tinfoil hat theory crazy land, this is driving me insane. Now, let's move forward once again. We can see that Smiley doesn't have nipples or something happened to his nipples. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, in age 36, I never imagined myself googling and asking ChatGPT what is the purpose of my nipples, because I know why female have nipples, but why men have nipples, it's kind of weird, because like, and once again, if Smiley here has something happened to his nipples, then maybe they have some sort of a purpose. Yeah, this is the lens I go to in order to create those videos. So, yeah, once again, we can see here they basically like dried out. So, my explanation to this, exactly, I read this and I put this for you. Now you also know what is the point of men having nipples. There's basically none. Just our biology didn't think enough to get rid of them because they didn't really bother us too much. But for men, it's just basically there. So yeah, I think it's just because, you know, Smiley was completely dried out by the cicadas, by the worms, and this is what happened to his body. And look at his face, and look at here his nose, and at his eyes, you know, this, like, uh, by the way, I hope you're not eating anything right now. It kind of felt to me like similar to some kind of a sea creature. I never noticed this, this is the first time I'm actually looking at it and it feels very sea-like, very like an um, octopus kind of thingy. And once again, if we remember the monster, the red monster we have seen in the caves, it looks very also like sea-like, like a medusa or something like this. I don't know exactly how to explain it, it's just a feeling, it's just an intuition, but it does feel like it was created in the water. So, Attack on Titan fans out there, if you are watching this video and you remember what happened in Attack of Titan, uh, with, you know, like the first one who became a titan. And maybe those people, and they were people, just like Christy is gonna say later, they were infected by something in the water. 
just just once again just throwing it out there just like exactly like uh, Mario is throwing out here I don't know it's just funny to me nobody pukes like that but you know like Hollywood what can you say she's like basically spraying whatever it is probably I have a very fucked up sense of humor but you know I don't know it was funny for me and I want to share with you once again we can see Mario is having a nightmare and I you know that I love those kind of notes like uh, uh, check your talisman uh, see if you turned off all the lights and if you put all the blinds please put everything in the place i just enjoy it i love when production puts everything here for us to feel this place as real as possible and she's having this nightmare she is basically experiencing smiley attacking her you can see behind her there's this is probably no connection at all this is probably some kind of like a radio that the school uses in order to tell kids like it's time for a lesson but it once again it reminds me of this this symbol it's very similar it's very blurry here so please rewatch this moment and you can see what i'm talking about uh but yeah it was very similar to this symbol once again probably no connection but maybe there is and you can see that the ballerina here she has her leg broken and i never kind of looked at it but this is her leg it's laying there so there's gotta be some purpose for that right once again let's imagine the production team and they're like okay this is the box with the ballerina let's roll it and somebody was like, yeah, let's break her leg. Why? I don't know, I just don't like her leg. Let's break her leg. It wasn't probably like that, right? You can see that, right? It was probably, yeah, we need to break her leg because A, B, C, because there is a reason for it. It gotta happen for some reason or it once again, they're just already winging it and they're just like, let's break her leg and wait for until Fromily will drive themselves crazy to understand why we did it. And they're like, oh, laughing, you know, like Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> so as I told you, when Christy opens up Smiley, she says it's a human because it's got the exact same anatomy. There are lungs, the heart, the liver, she mentions liver because it's important, and it's like some shit that you see at a museum, it's completely dried out, it's a dry human. And if it was really a marine creature, something that came from the river, from the lake, from the sea, by the way, we're gonna see some lake, the Lake of Tears in season 3, there's gonna be a lake, we have seen already a Kenny there standing next to it. This one looks a lot like a, some fucked up fish, like look at his head, this is a fish. This is a very scary fish, it's like a piranha on steroids, but it's a fish. And when it's dried, it's kind of logical, you know, like there is some kind of connection, like you kill it by drying it out, no water, no life. You can also kill a human by that, but this is obviously not a human. So this is why I think we, can, we have seen already the white, completely, almost not appearing nipples out there. And I hope YouTube is not gonna consider this video 18+, plus because I said nipples already a couple of times. And uh, yeah, but maybe their blood is different than ours, probably, yeah, because they're freaking weird. And we can see some bile. And once again, this is me sitting at 2 a.m. checking a chat GPT. What is gallbladder? What does it do in our body? I wasn't a good student in biology in the school, but now I'm reading about gallbladder and I'm reading about bile. And what does it help us to do? So the functions of the gallbladder is basically to store the bile that the liver produces when it gets some cholesterol and some other shit that we don't need and it transfers it to bile and this is where we store it so it's basically waste that we don't really need so if the cicadas the worms the demons that basically you know like invaded uh, boyd's body and then they went to smileys if they took everything from him they sucked his life out of him the only thing that was left was a little bit of waste it even sounds a little bit logical to me but does it mean that the bile really doesn't have any purpose like we're gonna see in season two it's not gonna help it's, they're not gonna be able to make weapons out of it nothing's gonna happen to monsters when they're gonna shoot him so obviously of course i read about the bile so bile in native american mythology this is something that was used as medicine like from buffalo and bear but it also has some spiritual connection to the powerful animals might be used in rituals to connect with the animal spirit symbolizing strength of endurance but also in christianity we have bile in jesus story when he was already on the cross 
okay, he was offered wine with bile because it was considered like a pain relief medicine and he refused to do it. So in this context, it's extreme bitterness, it's reflecting Jesus' suffering and the burden of human sin. Now, can we connect it somehow to this place, to Fromville? Maybe, especially from the Native American kind of point of view, like basically like they killed this freaking animal the smiley guy they took him bile from him and maybe it will serve as some sort of a connection to the monster world but once again i cannot see the creators not doing anything with it basically just saying oh there was a bile now there's no bile you deal with it that's it we just put bile there just you know because we wanted some bile come on you're not gonna like hold it against us sometimes a guy wants some bile in his tv show what are you gonna do and as usual i'm gonna end this video with your comments today not that many i hope you will forgive me for that one of the comments is basically a donation for two dollars thank you so much mercy uh you wrote love your comments regarding men and fathers thanks for the good content this is basically just my opinion i don't think i'm all for progress i'm all for moving forward and fixing mistakes of the past but you know like trashing everybody in the process i don't think this is a solution this is a just a way to create more enemies and more division in our community so so thank you so much for your support and the next comment is in division in the church i think the talisman is there to show that the talisman is an allegiance with the ballerina the ballerina in white also they're in church i think it's showing the worms music book ballerina in white and talismans and boy in white are all on the same side at least it's a side together against the monsters i think the evil entity blackmailed boyd into destroying the music box the bad guys make the good guys take out a piece for the good side maybe once again i don't think i agree with this theory but i enjoy how your brain works and this is what I love about this show and every time I hear it like oh, I hope they're gonna release every episode together and when I get binge watch and I really need some answers I understand those people I like I don't want to throw shade in them or something like this everybody enjoys the way they are enjoying this TV show but for me this is so rare so freaking rare in the modern area to have this kind of TV show that you can basically discuss and talk to people and you can build some theories and you can watch one episode every week and then every day after that you can think about something, trying to find some clues. This is super rare because it's either not like this and everything is understandable or it's completely made for morons, sorry for saying this, or it's a TV show that is based on the book and if you're a YouTuber and you try to talk about it, always, always somebody's gonna come in the comments, of course I read the book and this one gonna die and the reason is basically time travel. And you're like, thank you so much because you you know i couldn't read i don't know how to read and i really hope that you're gonna come and spoil everything for me in the comments from and severance right now the only two shows that nobody's gonna spoil them for you and you can like build amazing theories about them and i really really love both of those shows and i hope you too and i really really thankful that you watched this video until the end even if you didn't enjoy it i really really uh, grateful thank you so much for your support and once again feel free to do whatever you want you can turn off this video you can watch another one you can like subscribe write some comment or maybe even go to patreon and support this channel with some donation thank you so much and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye